Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I hope you're having a wonderful time, uh, today being the 27th of this month, and uh, we're running, we're running out of June pride, Jesus pride days in the month of June, and I tell you, we've been having a ball, you know, I had some fun with you last week, uh, with the story from, from uh, a young lady, uh, Catherine, uh, uh, Mary Catherine, Mary Catherine, you know, uh, I haven't heard from anybody yet. Uh, her husband, I guess he took her to Orlando, Florida and totally abandoned her. How in the world can a beautiful lady, a beautiful brunette white lady living in, of all places, Orlando, Florida, how can she be so lonely? that she uh, didn't think she would ever make friends in Orlando, Florida. Now, Brother Gary, she didn't say that she was out in the desert. She's in Orlando, Florida. Uh, Walt Disney ought to brought us, have brought us some friends. It's a tourist town. People moving in there all the time, hustling, bustle, going on. Orlando, Florida never sleeps. And here's a woman sobbing. You remember me last week. She said she'd go to work every day and then drive home from work. I guess there was no one at work. And, uh, and, and get with the horses and cry and sob. Then she met a homosexual. And uh, over hash browns and coffee, uh, she, I guess, gets converted or she begins to, she turns on her Christian friends. And, um, and, and, and actually wishes that we would have an, a super uncomfortable pride month. Well, sister, we're not uncomfortable at all. When you're standing on God's truth and you're standing on right, there's no reason at all to be uncomfortable. Now, just a little tongue in cheek here, if you will. I read an article that made me consider, consider becoming Pakistani. I, I can see your faces now. Pakistan, Pakistan, pa Pakistan, according to this opinion piece, photographed by Spencer Platt, um, and it says this, Gage Kilper, commentary and, and, and analysis writer, June the 19th. The name of the article is Pakistan has the perfect solution to Pride Month. Pakistan. Pakistan, are you listening? Has the perfect solution for Pride Month. It says, it's not often we turn to Pakistan for how to have a functioning society. But in this rare instance, they might be onto something. A Pakistani man tried to open a, you know, I don't call them gay, a homosexual club pride bar <laughs> in Pakistan. He was promptly admitted <laughs> to a mental, a mental hospital. <laughs> now, say what you want to. The Pakistani was right. They thought that he was crazy. First off, I don't believe anyone is homosexual in Pakistan. Do you see how horny they are on Facebook? <laughs> no American has ever received a dear sir send, I don't, I don't want to read this, send something now message from a Pakistani uh, incel. So, but there is reasons uh, the woke hypocrites in our State Department only fly pride flags in Western countries. The rainbow uh, wasn't going to fly, obviously. So, uh, and then, then he goes on to say, in all seriousness, however, I can think of countless ways for this to be 
applied beyond the slums of Istanbul. Uh, sorry, Araldo, the great American mental institution is making a comeback. A public service announcement to all school teachers. Talk to a child about his or her gender identity and you'll earn a one-way ticket to the asylum. There's something clearly wrong with anyone who would convince a young, healthy child to manipulate their bodies, let alone as part of a sick sexual fetish. Fetish. They use to castrate groomers, but I think we can start with some electrotherapy. Uh, and it goes on. So, um, uh, the in, in Pakistan, uh, they have a way of dealing with this. And my friends, we certainly don't promote hurting or castrating anyone. I mean, what? After all, the people on my side, people who believe like me, we're not the ones who push castration. It's you. What do you think removing a child or even a, a grown person's sexual genitals that are perfectly healthy is other than castration? You're the ones who have justified the mutilation of the human body and what happens to these people when they wake up, when they come to themselves. And many do, most do, and they realize that the damage is done and it cannot be undone. I tell you, yes, I talk about it. I have to since they have designated the entire month of June as uh, <clears throat> a pride month. We have dedicated here as Jesus pride month and we have just a few days ago. So we're excited about it. I want to read a passage of scripture from the book of Jude. Jude said this, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, this is Jude verse 7, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities round about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, sexual immorality, and going after strange flesh. Strange flesh here is homosexuality are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of God. Look at this. Look at this. Even the fallen angels, and back in the days in the book of Genesis, the fallen angels went after women because they saw that the daughters of men was fair. The angels even knew better. And yet, here we are, here we are in this day and time in America, uh, uh, devoting a month to behavior that God calls immoral. Uh, Genesis chapter 6 and verse 1, and it came to pass when men began to multiply upon the face of the earth, uh, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God, saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. Now this was an unsanctioned union because the telestial and the celestial cannot uh, go hand in hand and evil people, evil beings were born as a, re as a result of this union and uh, giants lived in the land as a result of the union and God saw that the wickedness of man was great upon the earth and that every imagination uh, of, the, of the thoughts of his hearts were only evil continually. And God was sorry that he even made the human race. And it says here, but Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. My point I'm making, however, is that these sons of God, Brother Garrett, these were fallen angels. They noticed that the women was fair. But in Jude here, he's talking about how these, uh, the men of Sodom and Gomorrah, they participated in a lifestyle 
And uh, by the way, the Bible has not changed. And until the Bible changes, we're not going to change. Uh, and they called it strange flesh. And it was, it was not allowed. So I want to say to those who are watching, uh, stand on the word of God. And, and before I invite you tonight, I want to say to you, someone asked me the other day, says, Bishop, what and why do you preach against this so hard? And my immediate answer to all who ask me this, especially especially if they're in the ministry, is why don't you? When you see what is being done in our society, when you read what the Bible clearly states, when you see that this is a lifestyle, a behavior, that the overwhelming majority of the people who participate in it was abused into it. Talk to them. Talk to them. They'll tell you about the trauma and the things that they have suffered and the things that they face. Yes, just talk to them. They'll tell you about that uvuncular uncle, that family member, in, in, in so many sad cases, dad, mom, people whom they trusted, who took advantage of them, them, who abused them. Yes, talk to them. They'll tell you how they got into this, uh, uh, I, you know, Brother Garrett, they call it a lifestyle. The reality of it is it's a death style. It, it, it shortens the human lifespan. It's not a, it's not a healthy uh, 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 way to live. And, 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 and our point, as we point these things out, is not to be critical of anybody. And yes, last week I had some fun with the, uh, uh, Mary Catherine, she asked for it, uh, writing that silly emotion filled argument. I still wonder what kind of husband could uh, neglect his wife and she's so lonely that she, uh, uh, she ends up uh, having to find friends with drag queens and homosexuals. I mean, uh, who, the article embarrasses her husband. And uh, uh, write me, uh, 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 Mary Catherine's husband, and tell us where you were. But back to this, back to this. We want to see people saved. We do not believe that it's a good idea for there to be parades, for news agencies to be sponsoring gatherings where you're promoting a lifestyle that is detrimental, that all the major religions of the world call evil, that the majority of the people who are involved in it were abused into it, that is rife with health problems. Yes, a wicked lifestyle. In the Netherlands, where same-sex marriage and things like that have been embraced for years, Yet in the Netherlands, the suicide rate for members of the LGBTQ community, where there is practically no resistance to their existence, is much higher. 10% are higher than their heterosexual counterparts. What is that telling you? You see, my friends, wrong and sin will destroy you. It doesn't matter what Hollywood says. It doesn't matter what these so-called enlightenment people are saying. They're wrong. They're as wrong as they can be. And you know that they're wrong and they know that they're wrong. And they know how to come against people like us and make us seem so mean and judgmental and homophobic. What are you afraid of and all that kind of stuff? We're afraid of nothing. We're afraid of everyone. We're afraid for anyone to go to hell. We don't want anybody to be lost. We want people to be saved. So this is why we do what we do. This is why we cry aloud and spare not. With the amount of time that we have left, this is the last Thursday in the month of this month that we will be able to talk to you about this during their so-called Pride Month. Now, you know from Brother Wooden, you're going to hear about this uh, often. 
because it is one of the defining issues of our day and we will continue to stand on God's word and we are not the kind of preachers. I'm not, we don't pastor the type of church where we find something else to talk about. No, we're going to stand against wickedness. We're going to preach the whole counsel of God's word. Though for those who say, well, he only preaches against homosexuality and abortion. If that was true, I'd tip my hat and thank you, but it's not true, but we will continue to stand. I hold that the reason it sounds like we talk about it so much is that sadly, so many preachers talk about it so little. But I want to say to anybody who is watching, who is struggling with this lifestyle, Jesus loves you and Jesus will deliver you. Deliverance is not always easy. Sometimes you fall off the horse. Sometimes in trying to get to where you're going, you may take two step backwards, forwards and three step backwards. But get back on the path. Get back on the horse. Keep striving. He is a deliverer. He will set you free. And God wants you to be free in the name of the Lord. And instead of school teachers and movie stars and politicians and whole political parties and surgeons uh, endorsing lifestyle that's going to make money for them at the expense of people who, let's face it, are having all kinds of mental and spiritual problems. Anytime you th you're a man, you think you're a woman, that's a mental, spiritual, and physical problem. That is an abnormality and vice versa. A woman, you think you're a man and you, 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 you're trying to turn yourself into a man and you're putting hormones in your body that shouldn't be there. Oh my, something's wrong and it's badly wrong. But your, the solution to this is Jesus Christ. I heard uh, evangelist Krista Amanchuku. I hope that you heard her message that she preached last week during the AIM conference. She said something profound. And she was talking about many of those in the psychiatric uh, uh, society and line of work. And she talked about how she didn't trust many of them because... Many of their customers, many of their patients come to them on a regular basis with challenges, issues, dilemmas, and dilemmas that stem from immoral decisions that they're making. Whether those immoral decisions are homosexuality, lesbianism, adultery, fornication, you name it. But they're having problems from their immoral lifestyle. And I thought it was just profound how she pointed out that they will treat the symptoms, but they never encourage those people to live holy. They never tell them, you know, you may want to stop uh, participating uh, in that ungodly behavior. You may want to try uh, adapt the biblical standard of abstinence. You may want to save sex for marriage. You, you, may, you may want to consider what God says about Adam and Eve and not go along with what the world says about Adam and Steve. Yeah, I said it. And that's part of the problem. Too few people are being told the truth. Well, this preacher is going to tell you the truth, my friends. And I'm not telling you the truth because I hate you or that I'm angry or that as a uh, uh, Mary Catherine uh, said uh, that uh, we're sad and uh, um, but I'm telling you because Christ loves you and he died for you. Enough of that for now. I want to invite you tonight to the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Last week I preached on Friday night. By the time you see this, I will be in St. Louis, Missouri at uh, the AIM Convention, the National AIM Convention. But this Sunday, my friends, I will be back in the saddle at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, preaching the Word of God. Now, we have a tremendous lineup tonight. You're going to be blessed by the Word of the Lord. And many of you have written me, and I'm so thankful to you. Many of you have let me know how you have been blessed and how you recognize that God has given us 
right here at the upper room, Church of God in Christ, a deep bench. We go, we invest quite a bit in our ministers and our men and women who carry the word of God because we want every one of them here to be able to tell it and to say it and to preach the gospel because this thing is not about one person, but it's about the work of God taking place in the earth. So I want to join you. I want to invite you tonight to watch, to be a part of the upper room church of God in Christ. And when you tune in, whether the preacher is preaching or teaching one thing uh, that will be a part of the the presentation is that you will participate in Bible study. <laughs> That's right. Bible study. The word of God will be preached. The word of God will be studied. And you join me uh, this Sunday right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. For the last Sunday, uh, we got a fifth Sunday in this month. For the last Sunday in this month, uh, of Jesus Pride Month. We're going to celebrate and God is going to bless us real good. Thanks for watching.